the moisture and atmosphere in there, there because that will contaminate the system and cause it to act funky. How long do you run the vacuum pump for? Until the gauges go down to uh, 30 inches of mercury. So you don't have to keep it running once you're there. You know, it, one, the problem with doing really super deep on plates, they're just called plates, but it is technically the evaporator, commonly referred to as a chiller, or, a, or on some places it's just plates, but it is technically the evaporator, just like this is technically the condenser. Um, this is the evaporator, but it's often called a chiller. It's like glass, like you guys just got that one in your hand where you can unspin it, and there's that tough one seat in there. That would be one of the places you would look for a leak. Uh, leaks are indicated by um, the brass of the body, and it moves up and down. There's a tiny, tiny little spring in there, and then there's this iron plunger. Now, uh, when you put an electric magnet on this, it'll lift the plunger up, and the pressure will lift the seat up, and refrigerant will start to flow. The still is still running, and it's going to send liquid refrigerant through, and if this thing can't communicate that it's getting cold, then it's going to keep on pushing refrigerant through and it's going to fill the compressor up with liquid and it's going to blow it out. Remember when I said it was about 150 to 130 apart? 85 to 220, that's 140, 138 apart right now. So if I close this valve, the suction pressure starts dropping. If I open it up a little bit, the first line here is getting warm and probably going to be kind of cold, but it's slowly getting warmer and the bottom is colder. 